looking at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. We're in a few moments of second half of our Big Ten, Pac-10 doubleheader in Michigan, taking on UCLA. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to New York. I'm Roger Twybell. Top-ranked Notre Dame was a winner today, and also second-ranked Miami, 38-7 over Missouri, as Miami intercepted six of Kent Kiefer's passes. West Virginia has to come from behind at Louisville to beat the Cardinals 30-21. Underway in the second quarter right now. Pittsburgh leads Syracuse 16 to 13, and in an upset, Stanford scores 18 points in the last seven minutes to beat Oregon 18 to 17. I'll be back throughout the evening with highlights and scores. Now let's go to Keith Jackson. Roger, it's been one of those white hot days across Southern California. The temperature at least 90 degrees around the Rose Bowl here in Pasadena, where the Michigan Wolverines and the UCLA Bruins are going to butt heads in just a few minutes. They play on grass, though. There has been a breeze over the last couple of hours. It is not that uncomfortable down on the field. So I don't think the Michigan Wolverines, for one, uh, is going to have any trouble this early in the season adjusting with the temperature of Southern California. The Santa Ana winds, the old devil winds, are uh, the factor that produced this kind of heat this time of year in this part of the country. And it can get pretty doggone hot in the month of September. All right, for the sake of perspective, uh, let's consider what has happened earlier in the day. As Roger told you, Notre Dame won their game. The Southern California Trojans across town today walloped Ohio State 42-3 as young Todd Marinovich had a very big day. And uh, the Notre Dame score was 21-13 over Michigan State, and the Spartans had a chance at it. And right now, the Michigan Wolverines, who were losers last week, by a matter of five points to Notre Dame at Ann Arbor have come into the stadium. And now the UCLA Bruins, with a record of one and one, come into the Rose Bowl. They were walloped by Tennessee. I mean, they were slapped around by the Volunteers. They barely escaped against San Diego State. And Terry Donahue in his 14th season now with a record of 108-39-7. And, and Terry is certainly concerned having to send his Bruins out tonight against a Michigan team that he figures is going to be pretty angry. He knows full well Bo Schimbeckler is because Bo did not want to lose that ball game last week. So, Bob Greasy, let's talk now for a moment how you feel the, the, about the, the mood of the Michigan Wolverines. Well, there aren't many happy campers on either sideline. Uh, Michigan thought this was going to be their year. They had 17 starters back from a team that won nine straight coming into this year. They ran into Notre Dame. Notre Dame was a good ball club, and as Bo said, they were better than us that day. But an early loss doesn't mean you're out of it for the season. You can still come back, and Michigan may be there at the end of the year. The problem with Michigan, they've lost their two senior quarterbacks. That means Elvis Gerbach, a young man, the redshirt freshman, who came on last, year, last week and really played well for Michigan. has uh, got to play well for him today. But I think Bo is going to go back to his run. And I think to win, they got to have to have to have well, something, Terry, something on the ground. Terry Donahue just bangs your ear constantly about on the same theme. He's got young Brett Johnson, one of the touted redshirt freshman quarterbacks in the country. Yet he says, we've got to run, we've got to run, we've got to run. Well, I think he's right. It's a new era. Uh, Troy Aikman is gone. Brett Johnson takes over. They have tried to run unsuccessfully their first two games. They lost to Tennessee and almost got beat by San Diego State. They're going to have to pass because Michigan's got to go let him run. Brett Johnson's got to have a good day. Well, in a, in a phrase, it's kind of a night of searching still early on in the season. The series record, Michigan leads at 5-2. Last game was in the 1983 Rose Bowl, which the Bruins won. Football. The Michigan Wolverines versus the UCLA Bruins. Brought to you by Honda, who invites you to test drive the all-new Accord at your Honda dealership starting October 5th by imported Heineken and Amsdale Light Beer. By Scope, the best thing first thing in the morning. And by Magnavox, smart choices for smart people. Magnavox, smart, very smart. UCLA won the toss, deferred to the second half. Michigan will have the ball first. Here is Mike Adamley from the field. Well, Keith, earlier today at the UCLA Hotel, I talked to some of the players. Quite frankly, they were embarrassed by the way they played against Tennessee in the opener. They were angry that they didn't beat San Diego State by more last week, and they really feel that today's game against Michigan could hold a key to their season. A great performance against the Wolverines. They're back in business. A poor showing, and it could be a long, long year. But I will tell you this much, from an emotional standpoint, the Bruins are sky high. Terry Donahue has got them going this week, and it'll be that emotional edge versus Michigan talent that could tell the tale today. Keith? 
Thank you, Mike. It was kind of interesting Thursday. I thought that TD was <clears throat> trying to play down, play down, keep it quiet, keep it calm. It's, it's a difficult decision for a coach to make with a team that has potential but gets a so-so start. When do you start jacking them up? Bo starts uh, first thing Sunday morning after the, <laughs> the game. Uh, Donahue, on the other hand, is a little bit different in, in, in his tactics. So it was kind of interesting to watch how he operated. UCLA will kick it off with Bradley Galeuso doing the kicking. And Tony Bowles and Desmond Howard will be the deep people for Michigan. The Wolverines will be in the white shirts. They're on the road. Last time they were here in this ballpark, they had a big game. They beat Southern California in the Rose Bowl. Galaviso hits it, and it's a low line drive into the end zone, and Howard will not return it. Michigan will go to work from the 20. The crowd tonight expected to be somewhere in the 70s. It was very, very hot yesterday, cooled off some today by 10, maybe even 15 degrees, and the breeze that is uh, wafting across the big oval is going to help a great deal. It gets very comfortable this time of the year once the sun goes down, and it's already casting shadows onto the field. So here come the Wolverines now, operating uh, from their own 20-yard line. The referee is Gordon Reese. It is a split through of officials again, and we'll give them to you as we have a chance. Elvis Gerbach, number 15, is the quarterback. Bruins show a six-man front. Here goes Bowles with the ball. Pursuit to the outside by UCLA is not bad. Tony picks up a couple of yards. Gerbach is a six foot five redshirt freshman out of Willoughby Hills, Ohio. Leroy Horde was the MVP in the Rose Bowl January 1st. Tony Bowles in there, the asterisk mean uh, returning starters. Chris Callaway, Greg McMurtry is a wide out. Along the front now, Michigan going into this ball game has two sophomores, a junior, and two freshmen because of injuries and illness. That is a very tender spot for this football team tonight. Second down and eight. It's pulled to the hole over the left side. Close to the first down. They'll mark him a yard short. The defense for UCLA, they are young at some key positions and thin defensively. And as Terry Donahue says, kind of slow-footed with Lotus Kelly and Wilcox, the down people. The backers, our Keaton, Craig Davis is the real ringleader of that bunch. Meet Shaw and Marcus Patton. The secondary, Beverly, Darby, Turner, Lambert. That's a good secondary. That Darby and Turner will take your hat off. They don't have as much speed as they've had in the past, and that is a concern for Donahue. Third down and a short yard. Ford carried, and I don't know if he made it. Just skip him. He took a lick right at the top of the stack. It might have been Eric Turner, the free safety that came flying into the stack and belted it. It'll be very close. They'll probably have to bring the change. Jim Beckler said after the loss to Notre Dame, he was very upset with the play of the offensive line, only gaining 94 yards on the ground. Bo says he likes to gain at least 200 yards. Take a look at the offensive line for Michigan. The three interior men, the two in yellow are redshirt freshmen. First start for Elliott, second start for Everett, and the first start for Kokovo. Chris Stapleton is in the punt. Oh, Bo has changed punters this week, as Kona did the punting last week. Sean Wills, coming off a sprained ankle, is deep for UCLA. It is a low line drive kick, but it does get a Michigan roll, and it's going to roll dead down around the Michigan 22-yard line. So all things considered, an ugly punt that produced 49 yards. So now the UCLA Bruins, after a rather staunch defensive start in the ball game, and the Michigan offensive front ain't blocked anybody yet. They have not moved anybody off the ball off the line of scrimmage to speak of and uh, they didn't do it against Notre Dame and so far they haven't done it against UCLA and as Bo said the other night when I was talking to him maybe it's time to start thinking about some 260 pound offensive line first down just outside the 21 
And they run it with Brian Brown to the 25. UCLA starts with a redshirt freshman at quarterback out of Mission Viejo, California. Six foot Brett Johnson. Estwick, the blocking fullback, marks the good one and a starter last year. Brown, Carr, and Moore are the wideouts. Brown to the tailback, and you'll see three of those tonight. Anthony Jacobson, Meyer, Cornish, Zeno, Page, the offensive front, and again, the stars or asterisks there represent returning starters. So UCLA's offensive front relatively intact from a year ago. They've got fair speed outside. Stay on the ground with it. And there's the mind of the Michigan bunch. Number 24 stuck his nose in there. That's the outside backer, Bobby Abrams. The down linemen for Michigan are Brent White, T.J. Osman, and Chris Hutchinson. Hutchinson had a big ball game last week in his first start. The backers are Marshall, Grant, Anderson, and Abrams, and Anderson had a particularly good game. The secondary is Dotton, Welburn, Murray, and David Key, with Welburn and Murray, the most seasoned of those people in the secondary. <laughs> It is third down for UCLA and a little more than five. Michigan shows blitz, don't go. Johnson back to throw, gets some heat, gets it off underneath, and making the catch is Brown with a good move. Brian Brown picks up the first down as he jukes David Key, refused to let Key get a solid shot at him and picks up the first down. Terry Donahue, in talking with him during the days earlier this week, had these thoughts about the problems of his offensive line and rushing the ball. We really aren't moving uh, the line of scrimmage, and we're not opening up holes that you need to open up to get good backs through. So uh, that was one area of our football team that, that probably I uh, overestimated myself. I said, well, gee, we got four players back. We ought to be better. Brown is busy early on on first down from the 34, and he rolls over the top of the stack and just over the 35-yard line. Bobby, have you seen anything that surprises you? Well, UCLA started with two tight ends, meaning they're going to come out and try and run the football. The problem with the Bruins running attack up until this point is that eight-man front uh, that San Diego State and Tennessee threw at them. Uh, this time, they're trying to counteract the, the uh, defense by going two tight ends, getting a little bit more manpower in there. Scott Miller checks in, number two at a wideout, and goes to the bottom of the picture, replacing Farr. He was a high school teammate of Brett Johnson at El Toro. Second down, Johnson back to throw it. Gets him some heat. Gets it away to the sideline. Pass is caught by Brown out of the backfield. And so Brian uh, just kept moving, kept moving, and finally his quarterback saw him. And they made something out of nothing. It'll be third down in about two and a half. Well, the mobility of uh, Johnson made that play because his receivers to the left side were covered. He hit his check down, his outlet receiver, which was Brown, caught his second pass of the game. Far back in. They messenger the plays in with UCLA. Johnson gives that ball to Brian Brown, and Brown is hit by Veda Murray, number 37, and will not pick up the first and all. It's Eric Anderson. 37. 30 instead of 20. So Eric Anderson gets his first solo of the night. A 235-pound sophomore from Glenview, Illinois. Top of your screen, number 37 is Anderson. Just a little delay. Plays off the block of Meyer, 71. And he gets some help. Fourth and short. Well, here's some daring do for you. It's fourth down and a little over a half a yard, and they're going to go for it. A rather large gamble early in the ball game. The quarterback, Brett Johnson, sticks his head in the stack, and it's very close. Just depends on the mark. That is a big gamble coming in. Uh, Schembechler's defenses have always been good. In fact, second in the Big Ten against the run. This year, Donahue's offense not doing so well on the ground. UCLA confidently walking away, saying, okay, we got it. Well, I, I don't think so. You know, this is when, it's when, close, when a quarterback <laughs> goes into uh, a mass of humanity. He was running behind Frank Cornish, is uh, all packed in center, but it's just you're at the mercy of where the official spots the ball. Oh, he did get it. By that much. Woo. I bet you Terry's stomach just calmed down a whole lot right there. 
because you give Michigan the ball on your own 44-yard line early like this, that's asking for trouble. Well, if it works, it, it sends a message to your team, not only your offense on the field, but your defense, that, hey, we're going to go out and attack this team, Michigan. They're on our property. We're going to go out and show them we can play ball. Estwick is out of there now as UCLA goes to the single back offense. They were burned by Washington State last year, where they've incorporated some of it in their own attack. Johnson goes deep with it, and there's a fine play by Veda Murray. The intended receiver was down there, and he was available. It looked to me like that ball was going to drop right into the hand of, uh, I thought it was uh, Richardson and Farr. They were both in the area, and it looked like Richardson was the man. Murray made a nice play. You see Johnson going to the sideline, conferring with Rick Neuheisel, who is the quarterback coach. On second down, Gordon Reese. And a timeout. He indicated uh, toward Michigan, didn't he? He certainly did. Jim Becker is not too happy about whatever. Timeout has been called or not? They uh, staying in the huddle. No, now, they now didn't. He's he didn't yeah. call. It was his timeout. Yeah. Second down and ten. Six Wolverines up on the line. Now the backer Anderson backs out of there, leaving five. They go to the ground and 24. Bobby Abrams right there with some help from Marshall. So Abrams uh, gets his second tackle of the night, brings up third down and about ten. Washington State, USC meet next week. Some of you in the West will see that game from Pullman. Johnson gave a fair accounting for themselves at the Berkeley today. Third and still about 10 for UCLA after gambling on fourth and a half yards. Fred Johnson back, gets his pass off underneath. The pass is dropped by Reggie Moore. And it'll be fourth and ten, and the Bruins will have to punt. Kurt Maggio does that. Maggio comes into the ball game just under 43 yards average for kick. Trip Welburn, the junior from Greensboro, North Carolina, goes back. Trip is the free safety for the Michigan Bulldogs. He was a former running back, so he can haul it. Low kick, long kick. Goldman lets it go, hits inside the five, goes into the end zone, and once again, Michigan will start from the 20 after a 55 yard punt by Maggio. The hard hitting Cleveland Browns own the number one defense in the AFC, but Boomer Esiason and the Bengals have the top ranked offense. They meet on ABC's Monday Night Football. This is Roger Twybill in New York. Oregon had led 17 to nothing with seven minutes to go. Now 17-15 Oregon with 111 left in the game. Stanford recovers the onside kick. Corey Booker at the Stanford 48. Now the game-winning field goal with five seconds left. John Hopkins from the 37-yard line. And Stanford gets Dennis Green his first win as the Cardinal head coach, 18-17. Also at this time, Pitt and Syracuse. Pitt leads at 23-13. Let's go back to Keith Jackson. Thank you, Roger. Well, that is surprising. You never know, I'll tell you. These are young people. They change. <laughs> they sure do. And they grow from month to month. Here comes Michigan on the ground. Leroy Horde carrying the ball, running in traffic, running hard for 11 yards in a Michigan first down. I think Leroy likes this turf. Well, as you mentioned, he was the Rose Bowl MVP last January 1. 42 yards, two touchdowns, and uh, was the leading ball carrier against Notre Dame last week. I think these are good calls. Gary Molo, the offensive coordinator, sending in the plays. Letting Gerbach, who is starting his first game as a redshirt freshman, let him settle down a little bit. Last week he came off the bench. It's a little different when you're expected to start. Yeah, your stomach gets tight. Uh-huh, all week. <laughs> <laughs> On first down, Horde again. Really from hard. the 31 up to the 35. You know, one of the teams that uh, may surprise some people this year is uh, the Pitt Panthers, Mike Gunfrey's bunch. You know that? Yes, sir. 
Minnesota beat Oakland today. Cleveland beat California. So the Angels playing a doubleheader today. In Cleveland, they lose the first one. So ain't nothing but trouble for them right now. The Cubs came back to beat Pittsburgh. How about those Cubbies? All right. Uh, the Phillies lost to uh, the Cardinals, but the time's running out. The Cards are four back, and the Padres lose. Uh, uh, the Padres in the West are uh, still five back as the Giants beat Houston today. All right, here goes Tony Bowl for Michigan. And that's another Wolverine first down. So Bowe's heart's warm now. They run the ball for a couple of first downs. Well, the fullback, Leroy Hoare, getting a good block for Bowe. Bowe gaining 1,400 yards last year. Tailbacks gained over 2,000 yards, Bowles and Horde. When you talk about matchups, it's a very important thing to talk about how people match up, how teams match up at individual positions. Bowles last week got 17 yards against the Irish. Already tonight, he's got 19. Yeah. So what does that take? He just tells you that um, that Michigan has uh, can whip uh, UCLA's defensive front. Or the matchup is just such that uh, it's giving Bowles the opportunity. That's the headquarters of the Tournament of Roses, which runs the Rose Bowl game and the attendant festivities. And just a short way down the hill, you have the freeway, <laughs> the inevitable freeway. <laughs> <laughs> and we're over there somewhere in that smog. Prevailing wind throws it right back into the San Gabriels, and, uh, and it's, uh, it's a bit hazy on a hot day like this. All right, here's a speech to going in motion. This is Desmond Howard. He can fly. Gerback with a good action on the play. Dropping back, giving the ball to Tony Bowles. Bowles runs into Bruins after a three-yard pickup. Matt Darby, number 43. And uh, Matt gets up holding his right arm or hand. Hurt himself on that play. Matt Darby, some of you may remember, was the fellow who made those two horrendous hits in the game against the Nebraska Cornhuskers here last year. He's an outstanding player. In his second year, he was a high school linebacker. In fact, he was coached by the same uh, high school coach that sent Kenny Easley to UCLA. All right, it's passing time, possibly here, on third down at long five. We're back, back to three wide outs, gets the ball off, down the middle, through the ball, and the crowd intercepted on the rebound. It is picked off by Dion Lambert, and UCLA has the ball around their own 45-yard line. He tried to force it, and he paid for it. it. Was his first throw of the day. Third down, it's a tough time to come out and have to throw the ball downfield. The linebacker almost gets a piece of it. The defensive back gets a piece of it, and it's picked off on a deflection. There's the linebacker, Craig. I mean, Davis, 54. Craig Davis, ball is deflected off into the air. And Lambert, number 26, picks it off. Galloway had no real chance to catch that ball at all. He was smothered. Three blues around him. That's the worst ball he's thrown in, in, in a week and a half. He didn't throw a ball that poorly last week against right. Notre Dame. Just outside the 45. Here comes Sean Wills with the football. Sean Wills, the ball carrier. He's been gimpy a goodly part of the season because of an ankle sprain, but he was a very, very exciting true freshman a year ago. He is a 180-pound sophomore from Hanford, California. There's testimony to his first-year ability. Second down and eight for the Bruins. Brett Johnson gives it to Will. Will's got some quickness. He turns the corner, picks up three before Trip Welburn brings him down. Welburn is now up to about 220. So he can be a load in that defensive secondary. You know, that whole defensive secondary for Michigan are big people. They all weigh around 200, about six feet, 6'1", six and 200 pounds. But still, they don't give up speed. They've got a lot of speed. I'd say the strength of Michigan is their linebackers and defensive backs. Third and five for the Bruins after the interception. Ball right at midfield. Johnson, quick one to the sideline to have his first down. A little quick pop to the sideline. 81 makes the catch. That's Charles Arbuckle. Charles Arbuckle was an All-American in somebody's, some people's book last year. 
but he's constantly dinged up. He's had an ankle sprain this year. Coaches say he's got a proven he's a, a wealth of talent, but they can't keep him healthy. A lot of preseason All-Americans, too. They've got three good tight ends on this ball club. Back to the ground. Sean Wills hit once behind the line, taken down behind the line of scrimmage. 22 Dutton takes him down, but it was Chris Hutchinson who got the first hit on him and turned him back into Dutton. That's Dutton. There's a game going on over in Tucson, Arizona tonight that bears from watching uh, the Washington Huskies and the Arizona Wildcats. That's a very significant ball game in the Pac-10 country. Second down. All at 12. Brett Johnson going deep. Not there. Scott Miller on a fly down the sideline. Coverage on the play by Dutton and Dutton running right with him. And it'll be third down. Miller went to the same high school, played with uh, Brett Johnson. That was a good throw. His demand was not open. It was a fly pattern. Throw it outside where the receiver had the chance to catch it or just throw it incomplete. Well, that Air Force is still at it, aren't they? I'll tell you, that quarterback, Dallas, is oh, he's really sensational. something. He's just absolutely terrific. And he's a terrific youngster. I did a game when he was freshman year, and he was scooting around over there. Johnson back. Runs it out, throws it down the sideline. The pass caught by Mike Farr. He can do that. Johnson can give you speed to the outside and be reasonably accurate. Probably the biggest difference between Johnson and Troy Aikman of last year is that he had such great mobility. Johnson can get outside the pocket, and he has great feet, real quick feet and a quick release. Fullback carries into the middle. There's a Michigan man shaken up on the play. That's number 23 carrying the ball, Kevin Smith. He's a 250-pounder out of Oakland. And J.J. Grant... wobbly on the play and JJ's going to have to come out. He's got holding the side of his face there. It hit over the eye it looks like. So time out for a moment. We've got 325 to play in the first quarter and UCLA looking um, much sharper so far tonight than they did in their first two games. It is second down and seven. They are down at the Michigan 21. Big pullback again with the ball. He's inside the 20 to the 19. We're talking about the uh, quarterbacks, uh, Aikman uh, last year and Brett Johnson. Interesting to note the amount of the play calling has gone on this year as opposed to last year. We'll show you an interesting stat here in a minute. You hope. <laughs> On third down, Brett Johnson back, comes it to the sidelines, pass is caught by Richardson, and it'll be first down UCLA at the Michigan 10-yard line. And they picked on Dutton. That was a good catch by Richardson, but the class of Johnson staying cool in the pocket, rolling a little bit to his left, gets a little bit better protection. Take a look right here. Last year, 239 yards when Aikman was a quarterback. This year with a redshirt freshman, they're averaging 264 per game. It'll be officially at the nine. Johnson sprints out. Girls out there, throws a block pass into the end zone over the head of the intended man, Farr, because Farr was double covered. No, don't shows. give it away down here. Oh, that shows a little uh, experience right there. Nobody was open. He threw the ball out of the end zone. Five of nine with 53 yards, and he's picked up four first downs through the air so far today. John Milligan, who had been in at the inside back of position for Michigan, comes out now, and J.J. Grant goes back. For UCLA, second down and goal, just inside the 10. Arbuckle is in there, number 81 now, as they go back, back to the one-back set. Wills is the lone remaining back. Wills has the ball. And Wills gets down to about the five. 
All right, where did Arbuckle go? Well, he was he was blocking that time. When you get down here, though, you got to look out for him because he's a he's a big big target and he's a very good passer. Well, all of their tight ends. In fact, their tight ends last year caught 48 passes. Three tight ends caught 48 passes and seven touchdowns between the three of them. So prime targets down here. Now I guess uh, they figure they can run it in. They put Estrick back in the ball game and take Arbuckle out. They'll be for sure. Estrick in front of Will. Just short. Fullback leading, and uh, I'll tell you what, Big Mark Estrick moves some folks around. He's up to 240 pounds, and Will just hurt. Or he just had a little trouble getting on track. He's beaten on the ground because he didn't score. That's well, what. You were right about Aswick. In front of Will is number 22. Let's see if you see the block. He gets right there on key 26. Puts him in the end zone. Good blocking up front. Just short. UCLA has won 21 plays here in the first quarter. The Wolverines have had the ball for nine plays. They need a half a yard for the touchdown. Don't mess with it when you're this close. If you don't know what you're doing, on fourth down and goal, go ask somebody who's given the order. 58 <laughs> seconds to go in the first quarter. Well, this possession for UCLA started off an interception. The first pass thrown by Gerbach into a crowd, tried to force it, and they turned it over. And you saw that heated discussion on the sideline on fourth down and young Johnson was right in the middle of that conversation I mean he was involved and I think this is a good call if it's if you went for it on fourth and one back on your uh, own uh, inside your 50 you got to go for it on fourth and one you've you got Kevin Williams in there tailback right now and uh, he's the red shirt freshman from Texas Estwick is the fullback Williams gets it and scores Agree. You break the plane of the goal line, it's a touchdown. Well, the man in the white hat called it a touchdown. Unless the ball was out before he crosses, and the official at the bottom may not have seen it. If the ball is out before he crosses, the umpire straight behind him will be able to see it best. No, nope. he's over. He scored. That's off the close. It was tough to tell from that angle there, but uh, well, he was coming down when the ball came out. <laughs> I don't know where from that angle you can't really tell where he is. Take a look at this angle. Well, that's a great shot of the ball coming out, but you don't know whether he crossed that line or not. No. But the man in the white hat called the touchdown, and here's the extra point try by Alfredo Velasco, and it is good. And so UCLA goes 54 yards, use four minutes and 51 seconds, and takes the lead, seven to nothing. Kevin Williams getting the touchdown. He had the apparently the, was the better leaper of the three tailbacks. So I'm, if I were the other Brown and, uh, and uh, Wills, I might be talking to the shop steward here saying, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, we get it down there and you run it in, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's gone. That's a mistake. Uh, he gets out to the 20, so he'll get away with it. But, mm, boy, let's check in with Roger Twible. Thank you very much, Keith. 50th meeting between Nebraska and Minnesota. This game at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. First quarter, Ken Clark to pitch out. Good blocking. Turns it up. Six yards. Dives in. Touchdown. Now in the second quarter, 7 to nothing. But Minnesota has not won in this series since 1960. Let's go back to Keith Jackson. Hey, Roger. Nebraska hasn't played uh, all that well that this year. They've had some close ones. They haven't been really tested either. It'll be the 19-yard line for Michigan with Gerbach, the quarterback, Bowles and Horde lined up behind him. And UCLA leading after a 54-yard drive, 7 to nothing. Gerbach will get in pressure, and down he goes. Mike Lotus, who went to Brother Wright High School in Birmingham, Michigan. Recruited him and recruited him and recruited him, and when he was 
Sacked the Bo's quarterback. He looked right over to the Michigan sideline and pointed at him. Did he? Yep. Well, he Bo wanted him bad. I don't know if I'd be doing <laughs> is all the way back to the 10. Ford is the lone back now on second down and 19. And Gerbach will get it away to the sidelines. Got a man. Pass is good. Caught by Desmond Howard. And the quarter is over. The catch is made out beyond the 25. Ford, 7 nothing. Wolverines will be coming up with the ball as we go to the second quarter. period of play this arguable touchdown UCLA leading seven to nothing and that is close the man at the bottom the official at the bottom the linesman makes the call and I think it was a good call although it was hard to see from any of the angles that we had it is now third down and two Michigan at their 27 with Horn and Bowles in the backfield and Here's some trouble for Leroy Hoard. There's a penalty flag thrown as he is forced behind the line of scrimmage by Meach Shaw. And Meach getting help from the referee through a flag. And that normally means holding. Personal foul. This time. Late hit on the quarterback. Somebody got a little carried away and popped Gerbach. And that's going to give the Wolverines a first down. The interesting statistic in the first quarter, the bottom two, the turnovers and time of possession. UCLA dominating time of possession. And the turnover, the interception by Gerbach, leading to the only score by UCLA. Interesting, interesting that last week, you, uh, Notre Dame scored on a, after a turnover uh, by Michigan also. Their only score offensively. Top uh, left, uh, Gerbach getting hit. That is probably what the uh, Lotus, personal foul was. Yep, it was. I'm sure it was because you're right in front of the referee. If you're going to do that. You ought not <laughs> to have somebody wearing a striped shirt standing there looking at you. 42-yard line, first down for Michigan. Bruins lead 7-0, just starting the second quarter of play from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. This is Bowles losing a couple of yards. That good defensive bunch swarming tonight. The Blimp Columbia, based in Carson, California. A Goodyear Blimp piloted by John Creighton out of Redondo Beach, California. Carries that gyrocam 360 camera system. They operate it by remote control, and it's the best duty a cameraman can have. Floating in the blue sky of Southern California. Loss is back near the 40. So we can fairly say second down at about 12. A little bit of a delay goes to Leroy Hoard. Not a lot there. He got up there about two yards, and then they threw him back three. For Elvis Gerbach, a little different sort of a circumstance. At least that's the opinion of his coach this week. I've seen guys come off the bench and kind of freewheel it and look great. And then all of a sudden, when they have to take on the whole game, uh, they don't look as good. I don't think that'll happen to him. I really think that he'll uh, he'll play extremely well in this ball game. If he doesn't, uh, I'll be disappointed. But I think he'll play well. So far, he's been intercepted once to set off the UCLA touchdown. But here's a very good pass thrown to the tight end, Derek Walker, and good for about eight or nine yards. It is short of the first down. It wasn't where he wanted to throw the ball. Look at 75, Skrepanek, and Patton, number 49. Skrepanek goes about 240, but it's the speed and quickness of Patton that gets around the big man and takes him down. So that, third, that third down pass is not good enough, and it brings up fourth and four. Skrepanek goes about 340. 
Yeah, they'll love him in uh, the NFL, pass blocking. Yeah. But he ain't knocking none of those uh, little guys out of there right now. That was a good shot because speed would normally get around the big size. Hunt is away by Stapleton. Penalty flag is down. Bruins have the ball. This is Wills looking for a crack. And he can't find it. And he's dropped on about the 17-yard line by Trip Welburn. Let's see about the flag thrown back upfield. 40-yard punt, 6-yard return. Penalty goes against Michigan. And I would imagine the Bruins will want him to kick it again because uh, right now the ball is resting short of the 18-yard line. Now there's an old-fashioned down-home growl right there. You right. saw it. <laughs> Goes back to last week. A special team. Jembeck were not happy with the way they played against Notre Dame. Now he has to kick the ball again. Just gives UCLA another opportunity to run something back. But uh, he said last week that he was disappointed with his offensive line and the play of his special teams. And uh, he has had good special teams in the past. In fact, Mike Gillette, uh, who graduated, handled both the place kicking and the punting. And to this point, he have not to really replace him. So Stapleton's going to punt it again. Here's Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, as you alluded to at the top of this ball game, weather not a factor. It's dropped about 15 degrees right now. The entire field is covered by shade. And believe me, both sides appreciate that. <laughs> this youngster can break one. He's dangerous. He flat killed it and knocked it out of bounds inside the five yard line. But in the meantime, Matt Darby, who almost blocked it, goes sailing into Stapleton and a penalty flag flies in his wake. So Darby decks the kicker and draws the flag. Well, this is the difference between the college rule and the pro rule. Darby was blocked into the punter. Here's Darby over here. Now watch him. He's going to be the only man close to him, but he's going to be blocked by one of these people up front. And he, when you hit it, a man and hit the putter in college, it's a penalty. Look right there at the bottom of your screen. In, in the pros, if you're blocked into the putter, it is not a penalty. He's clearly blocked into him. Hits him. There's no way you can control your body. You're doing a flip. It takes away some of the aggression from the defensive team rushing the punter. And there's no judgment involved. No. I mean, it's very clearly, plainly, the rule is terribly specific. We went over it and over it and over it and over it and over it. And uh, Dave Nelson drew us pictures about it. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's flat out put in there to, to protect the punter. I mean, they want to protect him at all costs. It takes some of the aggressiveness away. Uh, you're not going to have as many blocked punts because you're not going to get close to it. Well, UCLA man, the Darby, had to hit the ball to make it legal. And he did not get a piece of the ball. Well, big play here for uh, Michigan. On first down at the UCLA 42. And we're back to throw it. Goes down the middle, long, deep in the end zone, and incomplete, almost intercepted. Intended for Chris Calloway, but Chris never got his hands on it. Matt Darby, who is really hot after the last call, came the closest to catching it. Well, he knows he didn't intentionally hit him. As we look at the end of the play, ball could have been intercepted two men on one yep. the defensive man the UCLA Bruin bumped into the receiver but he was going for the ball fans are hooting a bit here in the Rose Bowl but that's only because they don't know the rule the rule is very very specific second down it's Horde I think Michigan. They do. I don't know how, but they do. The Horde fumbles the ball ahead and gets 
something out of the play. It is marked uh, inside the 36, close to the 35, and it'll be third down for the Wolverines. Callaway brings the play in from the side, and Howard goes out. Well, contrary to what Bo was saying in that little film bite that we had of him, this is a different Elvis Kerbach than we saw in last week's game. Third and three. Pressure coming. Pass away. Pass is good, and the pass will be good for a first down to Tony Bowles. But just barely. Not by a whole lot. Meet Shaw came in a hurry to get him. And I think that's a good call. Just get, get the young man settled down a little bit. He had all week to think about this start. He played well. Came come into a big game. You're on the road, on the coast. He's a little bit nervous. The short stuff, the safe stuff, but an easy men to the ball game. It's close enough for the change. this crowd happy. I don't think. From the 32, first down from Michigan. 11 and a half minutes remaining in the first half of play. They go to the wishbone now. New look in the game. Leggett in for Michigan. Joining Bowles and Hort. Leggett is 46. Ball goes to Hort. And Leroy, a junior out of New Orleans, Louisiana, who picked up a couple of yards, uh, maybe three, over the right side. Cleveland Brown, Ernie Kozar, Cincinnati Bengals, Boomer Asias, AFC Central, Riverfront Stadium, Monday night, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, ABC's Monday Night Football. Bengals with the number one offense in the AFC going against the Browns' defense, the number one defense in the AFC. That should be a lot of fun. Alan Jefferson checks in now, replacing Leggett. Jefferson is a pullback, a junior out of Detroit. He's number 28. Gerbach lost one to the corner for Callaway. Callaway is pushed. A bump. And no flag. Michael Williams was defending for UCLA and came very close, but not quite. Here they bump together. Well, the ball was poorly thrown. He threw it back to the center of the field. If the ball would have been thrown out toward the flag, he could have caught it. Both players were going for the ball. No, no uh, interference there, but the fact is it was a poorly thrown ball. It should have been thrown more to the corner. Yeah, he's throwing rainbows right now. Yeah, and he's getting, he needed to throw that ball outside more. He put something on it. Yeah, he, needed, he didn't need as much air. He just needed it to look flatter and get it there a little quicker. But he'll settle down. Third and seven, and timeout. Ten and a half minutes to go in the first half. UCLA, seven nothing. Maybe it's time for you to uncomplicate your life. Get your priorities straight. Start having more fun. May we make a suggestion? Eight-six, hurry and you'll make it. Delta Airlines ticket agent Sam Singletary knows how to get people moving. Mr. Franklin! Franklin, you're back. But sometimes he has to show off a few moves of his own, the kind of moves that made him a first-string halfback. Sam Singletary shares a feeling with everyone at Delta. He loves what he's doing, and it shows. We love Thanks. to fly, and it shows. Top ranked Notre Dame is riding a rocket toward another national championship. They'll blast off against Purdue to kick off an ABC College football doubleheader next Saturday. I mount the Colonials led. It is time. Third down and seven for the Wolverines from the UCLA 29-yard line. Ten minutes and 31 seconds. It's been a long, serious conversation on the sideline. That's Gary Moeller there wearing a headset. 
Bo Schembechler with his back to you, and the quarterback has been the center of attention. And a couple of the offensive linemen have been summoned over there for some choice words as well, because uh, on third and seven, they've had a couple of breaks in this possession to keep the ball. If you like to cash in, break. They'll throw it. Pressure coming. Passes away. Out of bounds. Incomplete. I tell you what, Gerback is very fortunate he was able to get it away. He showed a good little bit of pluck, as a matter of fact, in getting it away. Yeah. Well, the Angels may be done. And I think that's just about enough. They lose two. Kansas City is hurting right now. Oakland having won their game. So I guess Oakland lost to Minnesota. But nonetheless, when you lose two yeah. and you're four back this late in the season, you got trouble. In a week to go, you lose two, you should be out. Yes, uh, J.D. Carlson, the sophomore out of Tallahassee, a 46-yard field goal time. He got enough foot on it. And he made it from 46 yards. Michigan gets on the board, and it's a 7-3 ball game. Out here, and of course, Michael Taylor, starting quarterback uh, last Bunch, week. Fullback. Jared Bunch is, uh, is out. Four starters. Not here. Our two deep people for UCLA are Kevin Williams and Brian Brown, two tailbacks. Standing just inside the five. 10 18 to go in the first half. 7 3. UCLA leading. Albertson to kick it. Pops it with the left foot. Low line drive. Knocked down by one of the up men for UCLA and uh, brought back to about the 29 yard line. It was one of the tight ends, I think it was, that knocked it down and picked it up. Here's Mike Adam Lee. So much has been written about UCLA's young quarterback, Brett Johnson. Nobody knows him better than mom and dad, mother Debbie, father Bob, who's also his high school coach or was his high school coach. He's, this is the biggest game of his life, it has to be, but he's used to big games. Yeah, he really is. He's really excited about this. He's talked about it for weeks, and I'm sure it is the biggest game of his life. He's off and looked awfully poised out there so far. Yeah, Brett is a pretty poised kid. He's confident in himself, and he'll do the best he can, that's for sure. Mom, how are the butterflies? big real big they're like b1 bombers <laughs> but i'm real proud of them good to see you both enjoy the game i know you you don't want them to see you down here okay thank you brown carries for the bruins 185 pound junior out of carson california and he moves uh, close to the 35 and that's about a five yard pickup Big Ten, Pac-10 matchup we had earlier today here on ABC Sports. It was all USC, 42-3. Apparently they've recovered. This is Brown again. And he's just short of his first down. You know, when I sat and looked at the videotape of the UCLA San Diego State game, Bob, the thought wandered through my mind several times. You know, I know there's a lot of caterwauling about the fact that UCLA just barely beat them and had to come from behind to do it. But you know something? San Diego State may be a little better than some folks think. I think they were, and they are. I think UCLA just going to take them a couple of games to really get off their mark, too. They've got a lot of young players, especially the quarterback, as we mentioned, although he has played very well. They're getting off the ball. The offensive front's getting off the ball, I think, quite well right now. Just short of the first down, which brings up third and a half yards for the Bruins. All short of the 40 in their own side of the field. Mike Farr, the wide out to the bottom of the picture. Reggie Moore to the top. Lone back is Brown and the quarterback Johnson for the first down. And he'll have it. Sun going down now. And shadows lengthening as you see the center of the city of Pasadena. Run 
down all the scores and the highlights. Roger at halftime. I guess so far the biggest upset of the day would be, have to be Stanford scoring 18 points in seven minutes to beat Oregon. Oregon won that big game at Iowa last week. It goes Brown again and barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Very good defensive pursuit there by Michigan. Mike Evans. Talking to Bo Schimbeckler, I asked him what had been his focus during the week of preparation for this ball game, and he said this. I think the thing that's going to have to happen here for a while is our defense is going to have to carry us for a while uh, because uh, we, ha we have really four starters out now on uh, offense. So I think the defense is going to have to play extremely well. Try to patch up that uh, those special teams a little bit. God, that was awful, wasn't it? Huh? <laughs> if I had a gun, I'd have shot that guy, but he's probably going so fast I'd have missed him. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and ten. <laughs> Brett Johnson. Little knuckleball, but it works for Randy Austin for first down on the Michigan side of the field at the 47 yard line. That one slipped the tap. Wasn't pretty, but it worked. Here's Austin right here. He's just going to slide down the field and break to the outside. The play action is going to be in the backfield to try and hold the linebackers. Austin really number three on the depth chart at tight end. Just keeps running, uncovers himself to the outside, and that's a, really a good throw, Keith. Throwing it where he's going between two linebackers. Brett Johnson's accounted for all seven UCLA first downs, five through the air, and uh, two quarterback sneaks. On first down, goes back to Brian Brown. Nice little cutback over the left side and picks up the better part of five before J.J. Grant brings him down. That's at noon Eastern time, the Irish and the spoiler makers. What do you guys... It's an amazing thing how many times uh, Purdue jumped Notre Dame when they come in off the championship seasons. Out in the West, it'll be USC Washington State from Pullman. And uh, for the rest of the country, it'll be Miami and Michigan State. And both of those are really good ones. Back goes Brett Johnson on second down and six. And he's got a man and he hits it right on the hand. Mike Barr, first down Bruins, Michigan 18 yard line. A nice throw by the young man. No backs remaining in the backfield. Everybody's out. The wide receiver is going to go down. Here's four right here. He's going to go down right in the area. And watch the nice throw by the red shirt freshman. Five step, quick release, looks the safety off to his right and throws it in there on a the line. That's a good throw. Sean Wills in now. Brown out for a breather. And it flips to the right side for UCLA. They go the other way with Wills, who wiggles around very well in traffic. And picked up a half a dozen yards. Seven minutes and 15 seconds to play in the first half. 68 in the center is Frank Cornish. Doing a number right there on Osman, number 94. Cornish. Uh, will probably be one of the top two or three centers taken in the draft next April. Ball at the 18. Second and five. Will. That's the first down. First and goal at the six. UCLA banging the ball on the ground using the pass occasionally now and uh, they have it first down and goal at the Michigan six they lead seven to three and at six and a half minutes threatening to add to it. The thing you need to know here is UCLA is running better than they have all year and Michigan is not able to stop them. Johnson throws it. Touchdown.
high school classmate. He's just going to get into the end zone and curl. The outside receiver is going to stay wide. It's really poor coverage by Michigan. Johnson gets outside the pocket. Now he can see better, and he's got more time. There are two Michigan defenders there. Miller just stays between them and makes the catch. Versus UCLA. Brought to you by Honda, who invites you to test drive the all-new Accord at your Honda dealership starting October 5th. And by IBM. Whatever your size, whatever your needs, IBM is working to bring you the best solution. It's a 14-3 ball game. UCLA, Michigan has not been effective so far with their offensive team. And Brett Johnson has been particularly effective in his outing against his first really big name Big Ten opponent. Valeriso gets it inside uh, to the one where it's bobbled around and finally picked up by Tony Bold. It was bobbled by Howard, picked up by Bold, and Tony makes it a big play. Carlton Dre finally ran him down, so he's up way out beyond the 35, making the 40-yard line. Bob mentioned that Scott Miller and Brett Johnson were high school teammates at El Toro, coached by Bob Johnson, whom you just saw a moment ago, Brett dead. They teamed up to lead uh, the El Toro high school team to the CIF championship in 1986. And that does make a difference, Keith. When you as a quarterback know how a receiver is going to react when he has people around him. You know he's going to get to the open area. You have confidence in throwing the football to him. At the 41, first down for Michigan now. And this is Leroy Hoard. And he picks up about three yards. Kelly, 65. And Lodish, 94, at the bottom of the stack. Mike Lodish playing like a madman on the defense out there tonight. Of course, this figured to be uh, a game that uh, if he was going to jack up, he would jack up for this one. Leg it in now, number 46. Ford has the ball. He got turned around a little bit by number 29, Eric Turner, and he is brought down short of the first down. Here's Roger Twyman. Thank you, Keith. Nebraska is starting to put some distance between themselves and the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. Ken Clark, 14 yards, his second touchdown run, 24 to nothing now, just before the half. Keith, you might remember in 83 when Nebraska scored 84 against Minnesota. I was just thankful I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, you're right there. <laughs> Third down a yard and a half with a wishbone. Bowles, oh, good, firing over the right side. Got a big hole over there this time. And uh, picked up the first down. You know who uh, really laid some leather on that one? It was Joe Cocoso, the redshirt freshman, playing the right guard position. Mechanicsville, New York, and he laid a sound solid block to spring ball. Ball is at the UCLA 44 yard line. Now Horde and Bowles set up in the backfield. Time ticking along at 420 to go in the first half. Gerbach back, has protection, pass to the sideline. The pass is caught. Leroy Horde uh, lost the ball, and who's got it? Bruins got taken away from him. I think. Hold it. Hold on, let's see. Well, it looked to me like he was down, whether the ball came out before he hit the ground. I don't even know if it was a catch. I don't either. Look from the end zone. Can't see anything there, although he was down, or they both were down before the ball came out. If either one had possession, they were definitely on the ground before the ball came out. Man in a white hat is the one you want to watch. Mm -hmm. 
There are your officials. Horn, Beal, McMahon, <laughs> Decker, and Rao. Lost their rubles. All right, here's Gordon. Incomplete forward pass. Let's take another look. It's got to be either incomplete or the man was caught the ball and he was down. Now he doesn't have to be on that control on it. Numbers. Uh, Bates, Patrick Bates. Bates, number six, was in there and the ball was stuck between the two bodies. Nobody had control of it. I mean, that ball either had to be incomplete or if it was complete, it was a fumble after the man was down and that there's no fumble. But they got the right call. It's incomplete pass. Second down and ten. And the home folks have their second chance to hoot and holler. Harry saying, you made the call. Don't let him change your mind. You made the call. I think they did the right thing, though. They got together and three or four of them said, well, I saw it this way. Bowles up the middle. It's a good run by Tony. He's brought down at the UCLA 46-yard line. Number 53 making the hit on him. That's uh, Meach Shaw with some help from Marcus Patton. Shaw is the fastest of the linebackers. This is his first start also. He's a redshirt freshman. Bob Field, the defensive coordinator, wanted to get a little bit more speed on the field. And Shaw has that speed. We were talking about that earlier today. And as, as, as I put it then, and I'll say it again, in, in simpler times, they were simply sophomores. Yes. <laughs> True. And it may be that again. I think it should be. That'll be a first Leroy down Hoard. as Leroy Horde bolts through over the left side and gets the first for Michigan. Ball will be put at the UCLA 31 with 3.20 to go in the first half. 94 in the blue is uh, Mike Lodish. Strepanek is uh, 75, but Kokozo, 68, gets a piece of him. And 53 is uh, Shaw. Strepanek at 340 got a piece of Shaw. Good blocking up front for the uh, Wolverine. Yeah, Kokozo now is starting to get into it, isn't he? Yes, he is. First down for the Bruins, 31. Down game. Starting to work a little bit as Bowles carries 185 pounder from Westland, Michigan. Mike Lodish told me this when talking about what had to happen for UCLA to, to win this ball game. The fact of the matter is, is that UCLA needs to go out and establish a new line of scrimmage on the offense, and our defense has to prevent that oppo opponent's offense from establishing a line of scrimmage and dominate the run and force them to pass and use our quickness to pass rush and get the eldest to play back. Okay. Well, so far, they've done a pretty good job. Second down and eight. The ball is at the 29. There's a little delay as Horde breaks a couple of tackles and finds some daylight. That's a tough run by Leroy Horde, and he's got a first down, and he deserves it at the UCLA 15-yard line. That's as good a run as we've seen in a while. is a power runner. He's not like Bowles. Take a look at the blocking up front. Pretty good blocking. Everett, 51, gets a good block. Ford has the power. He's more of a slasher. He doesn't have the great speed that uh, Bowles does, but a good run there. Picks up a first down. Five folks in blue shirt had a hand on him and couldn't close the grip. They were all closed at that time. Marcus Patton. But there's somebody down underneath with authority. Patton is the one whose number's showing. But at 55, looks to me like there's a man down under the crowd. That was Rosine Keaton. Keaton and Patton, both uh, new starters on the outside this year. The defense lost a ton of good players, including Carnell Lake and Eric Smith, Henley, and Jim Waller, all off that group drafted by the NFL. Loss of about a half a yard on that previous play. Wishbone now. 
Rear back to the outside. Got his man over there. That's Callaway. And Callaway is thrown out at about the nine yard line. And he is thrown out by Michael Williams. Williams is an interesting story. A walk on last year. This year, the injuries to the defensive secondary and some suspensions. He all, all of a sudden, as a walk on second year player, was in the starting lineup. And Johnny, who has a rule that if any, any walk on is in the first or second uh, unit, they automatically get a scholarship. And so he pulled all the group together the Friday night before the uh, Tennessee game and said, Asked the young man Williams, he says, do you want a scholarship? He says, I'll take it. Bowles behind the line of scrimmage, trying to hand it off on a reverse to Howard, and Howard is brought down behind the line of scrimmage, and what are you, we're talking about Keaton, and we're talking about Patton, and there they are. I just think this is a bad call, Keith. I don't think this is any area it's of the field. Long. Exactly, to run a reverse. See the reaction of the coaches. The bottom, the bottom. When, when the defense gets down here, they're going to blitz. They're going to be more aggressive. A reverse takes too long to develop. Donahue says, yeah, we had the blitz going. And of course, Bo doesn't like it. The play just takes too long to, you know, you do that out in the middle of the field when they're not blitzing. Timeout, fourth down. Ball is all the way back from here, the 19th. I'm sure they'd like to do again this year. The regular season meeting at Ann Arbor in 82, the Bruins trailed 21-0, came back to win 31-27, and then beat the Wolverines a second time in the Rose Bowl game, 24-14. That 1982 team may have been Perry Donahue's best ever at Westwood. If you were going to sit and watch the Rose Parade, that's where you'd want to sit, right there. Corner of Orange Grove in Colorado. Meet Shaw officially got credit for that last tackle, and I want to make sure he gets public credit for it because that was the sixth of the ball game. It was a 10 yard uh, loss, and it's brought up uh, the field goal try here with 18 seconds to play in the first half. They have called another timeout. UCLA called it, I guess. Uh, the Michigan called it. I would think UCLA would call it to uh, make the young man think a little yeah, bit. Yeah, make him think a little bit. But now I'm told it was Michigan's call. Yeah. I get sources of information from three different directions and they're all <laughs> wrong. 19 yard line. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Cannably says he was standing right next to the UCLA bench and they called the timeout. The defensive coordinator for UCLA. Great job he does uh, with <laughs> those young people. All right, JD Carlson now sets it up at the 26. It'll be a 36 yard try. He's hit one tonight from 46. A lot of leg. Good. Well, he didn't mess with it. Remember, they're kicking without a tee, and everybody thought a lot of kicks were going to be low and blocked, but not so, so far this season. He just ripped it. So we got 14 seconds to play in the first half. The Goodyear Blimp Columbia offering this picture of the Rose Bowl at the end of a hot, hazy day in Pasadena. UCLA Bruins leading by eight during the commercial TD was doing some I mean down home serious lobbying with that linesman over there who had made that call some time ago when uh, Bates had a hold of the ball with Horde they went to the ground the ball came out Barry thought his people had it then there was the moment where you go back to rough and the kicker he wasn't happy with that <laughs> So he's uh, well, at least Terry bought him a drink. <laughs> they were sharing a drink. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that kick goes out of bounds down at the 24-yard line, and Bo is just beside himself. I don't blame him because his people are, are the special teams people are sloppy. Bo's an author now. He wrote a book, and uh, it's a very delightful book. Oh, it is. It's terrific. Read it on the plane coming back last week. Somebody asked him. He says, when they make the uh, movie, who's going to play Bo? And 
without batting an eye, he said, Robert Redford, of course. <laughs> Bob, you better go into training. 24-yard line. UCLA will kill the clock now, and that sets it in motion. From the 23-yard line, they'll let it run down. At halftime at the Rose Bowl, UCLA 14, Michigan 6. Second game of the Big Ten Pac-10 matchup today. Now let's go to our New York studio and Roger Cuevo. Play leading Michigan by a score of 14 to 6. And the UCLA Bruins had the ball a lot in that first half. But I sensed a little bit of a swing of things in the middle of the second quarter. The second quarter belongs to Michigan. Uh, I sense Michigan has taken them a little bit of time to get used to this turf. You know, they, uh, the, order, the, the regular grass, they're a turf team back in Michigan. Yep. They play on and they just look like they're a little bit slower. But the second quarter, the offensive line and some of the running backs seem like they're getting to get a feel for that grass a little bit more than the, the turf that they're used to. Well, the first UCLA touchdown was a result of a forward pass being intercepted. Gerbach's first pass of the ball game. It was thrown poorly and shouldn't have been thrown at all because it was thrown right in the coverage and the Bruins picked it off. What? Michigan only threw two interceptions all of last year, and he, they threw one this time. Sets up a touchdown. There is the fumble, but he broke the plane of the goal line, and that's all it takes for the touchdown. Kevin Williams, the redshirt freshman out of Texas, who is one of three tailbacks that Terry Donahue is using. The second touchdown now. Here comes another redshirt freshman, and this involves quarterback Brett Johnson hooking up with his high school pal, Scott Miller. Using his mobility to get outside, he buys some time, and he can see a little bit better outside, and there's nothing to read. You look for one guy, tell him to get open, and you throw it in there. The stats are all going to show uh, UCLA. They had the ball 10 plays, they punted, 13 plays, touchdown, 10 plays, touchdown. That's a lot of possession. Now, what do you think uh, happens here as we see the numbers in the second half? Well, uh, Johnson has played much better than Gerbach. Gerbach has got to play better the second half. Johnson has made eight out of the nine first downs for UCLA. Gerbach has not really done that much, and he needs to play much better. We were concerned going into the ball game with the pressure of knowing that he was going to start early in the week. He might play a little bit differently, and he has. Well, there's no question. I sat down with him Thursday, and the first thing after he said howdy, Terry Donahue wanted to know if, Brian, if uh, Michael Taylor was coming. Uh, and then I, and of course, I didn't know for sure at that particular point in time, so I just laughed and said, sure, he's coming. Sure. He's going to play. Yeah, he asked me uh, the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he's scared to death of Michael Taylor because he figures a big option team with Taylor's quickness could really hurt him. And the other fellow that uh, he was worried about was Dingman, Dean Dingman, who's yeah. homesick, that uh, he thought he was their best offensive lineman. So TD got some very good news yesterday in the form that uh, Dean Dingman and Michael Taylor were not here. Well, the other good news he's gotten tonight is the fact that his team is playing much better than it has in its first two ball games. Yeah. They gave up 25 points and 24 points in those two respective ball games, and tonight his defense is playing much better. I think possibly this game you'll learn something the first time Michigan has the ball to start the second half. So we'll be back to see what happens. It'll be interesting. As UCLA leads the Wolverines 14 to 6 at halftime. That, uh, I think, is Pasadena. I can't see it. <laughs> Stop it. John Albertson is going to kick off for Michigan, and UCLA will have first possession with uh, Brian Brown and Kevin Williams deep to receive for UCLA. Bruins are leading 14 to 6, and here we go with the second half. And this is Brown. Brian is a bit of an adventurous runner. He whirls and twists Brian, Brown. and bangs around in traffic, and sometimes the ball can be taken away from you. Now, let's talk to Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, talking to Michigan assistant coach Lloyd Carr, he said nothing really threw the Wolverines off guard defensively except for quarterback Brett Johnson. They, quite frankly, did not think he'd be as effective as he is today, and I think his quickness has surprised the Wolverine defense as well. well he is that. No, no, uh, no doubt that he's been the difference in the first half. From the 27-yard line, first down, UCLA. And it goes to the second man out of the I formation, and a good offensive surge by the Bruins front. Brian Brown has about five yards on the carry. You 
you know, one of the things that I, I asked the question, I don't know that I really got an answer of it, uh, but I did ask about it. it. Let's call a second down and four. You know, UCLA hired three new coaches and shuffled everybody else around. So the whole coaching staff has changed during the offseason. And handoff inside this time to Estrick. And one of the few carries that Mark just had is good for a first down for the Bruins. They're very close to it. But when you change all the assignments of the coaching staff and everybody comes back for the fall, I don't care how smart you are or how experienced you are, it's going to take you a little time to get used to one of them. Well, I think it does take a little bit of time. Of course, uh, Bob Field remained as the defensive coordinator. Steve Axman, who was the offensive coordinator, is gone. And now Greg Robinson, who was a defensive line coach, moves over to offense. So it's a little bit of adjustment. But, but Robinson was an offensive coach for many years before he moved over. Wood looking and searching, trying to use some outside Brian quickness Brown. as Brian carries the ball again. And Brown will take it to the 39-yard line. It'll be second down and about nine coming up. Mike Teeter in there now at the middle guard position. Mike was bunged up some last week in the Notre Dame game, but said yesterday he felt fine. And this week, just starting the second half of play. Milligan is also in there at the uh, inside linebacker. John Milligan, which means J.J. Grant is not in there right now, which probably translates into sore knee. This is Brian Brown again. About three, up near the 44. Incidentally, um, for those of you who have uh, been aware of Bo Schimbeck's mom, Betty, being uh, ill in Barberton, Ohio, she's had a good week. Feeling better, and I'm sure watching the ball game and probably not very happy about the way things are going. <laughs> I think she keeps Bo in line pretty well. <laughs> Third down four. Brett Johnson runs away from the pressure. He's got enough daylight, picks up the first down. The fact that a quarterback can move means so much to an offense. Everybody was covered. He took a busted play. That would have been the end of the possession. They would have had to punt the ball away. But a quarterback that can run has some mobility, scrambles out, picks up the first down. 49-yard line of UCLA. Opening possession of the second half. This could be a most telling series in this ball game. This is Brian Brown. Brian Brown. In that offensive line surge on a play like that where it appeared it was stacked, but still the surge is good for the better part of three yards. Anderson here as the line is going to double team here. Is going to get free and just get a part of the tackle. If you take a look at it from the end zone behind the defense, Anderson was one of the outstanding players for Michigan defense last week against Notre Dame. Johnson's going to air it out, but it's covered downfield, and he'll go down with some authority just short of the line of scrimmage and the man in pursuit was number 88 Brent White and 91 Mr. Teeter Mike well Keith you mentioned J.J. Grant it's not his knee that's bothering him he's actually been poked in the eye twice he's back in the game now and that's really kind of surprising because he's wearing one of these visors so apparently the USA USCLA offensive people able to get their hands underneath but he's back in the game and he's fine hey Mike thank you It is third and long. Third down and eight. Brett Johnson has time. Looks like it could be intercepted and is by the linebacker Anderson. Eric Anderson. Well, here's Anderson again. The tight end is right here. He's going to come to the inside and break to the outside. Anderson will be right on him. Sees it's passed. Covers the tight end, jams him, breaks to the outside. That's a good read by the sophomore, Eric Anderson. Take a look at the protection. Five-step drop, quick passing, quick release. Three men right around the ball. Yeah, maybe Brett got a little too confident that time and tried to force it. Yep. 
Well, UCLA intercepted and scored. Let's see what Michigan can do from the 41-yard line. This is Tony Bowles. And Tony Bowles puts the ball inside the UCLA 48, and that'll be a first down. And the tackle made by Shaw. Picozo, the big guard, was trying to get out there, got picked off, but Bowles didn't need much help as he got around the corner and picked up a first down. Bowles and Callaway come out now. Horde stays out as the lone back. Howard is in along with McMurtry. McMurtry, I don't think, seen the ball all night. Well, two tight ends. This is a different formation than we've seen in the first half. And first down. Number 54 laid a lick on him. That's the inside backer, Craig Davis, for the Bruins. Bruins arguing the ball had come loose. Michigan keeps it. Strepanak, 75, was down there. And when that big fella gets around the ball, forget it. That's a house. Like a little holding going on right there. Good hit. The ball is out, no question about it. The ball is out. Back to the 49, second down, 11, Michigan. They're back to throw. Has time. Got his man. Pass is caught for the tight end, Walker. Walker is here. He's going to slide in over the middle as the play action goes this way. A guard will pull. Gerbach seems to be settling down. Play action fake. The guard pulls. Top of your screen. Throws it over the middle linebacker. A nice catch. And just inside the 30 for the first down. Oh, Meet Shaw again getting a piece of the tackle with Ryan Kelly getting the bulk of it. Bowles now, 11 carries, 51 yards, and Ford, 12 carries for 52 yards. Seattle beating up Kansas City. And Palmer handling the Yankees tonight. Robbie's Orioles have been quite a story. number 42 diving over the right side and down near the 26 yard line Elvis Kerbach is not surprised to see Blitz and Bruins coming he told me he sort of expected uh, I've been thinking about that all week um, but the thing is I have a lot of seniors around me so it kind of helps and you know, if they start blitzing and that, you know, I just have to read my keys and, you know, just start picking them apart here and there. Third and long. Blitz coming. Bruins may have gotten off too soon. Lost it to the corner. McMurtry can't come down with it. The defense on the play by number 32, Randy Beverly. <laughs> Well, we were talking about the blitz, and he certainly got it. You saw him pointing before. He was pointing at the linebackers who were blitzing. Watch these two men as they're going to slide up. He was pointing at him a little bit earlier. He saw it coming. He could see it from the alignment of the defensive backs. They're up closer, and when they're up closer, they're up there to cover people. Well, that was close, though. Yeah, very close. <laughs> J.D. Carlson's out there. 46 yards good, 36 yards good, 43 this drive. In solid, holds it. Plenty of leg and good. So Ken Solom, a quarterback, sophomore, Canyon Country, just north of here. Holds and Michigan now totals nine. And it's 14-9 UCLA by five. Meanwhile, Arkansas holds on to beat Ole Miss as they intercept an Ole Miss pass from the nine-yard line in the end zone with 13 seconds left. Let's go back to Keith. So the 
called one, did they? 8.16 to go in the third quarter, and John Albertson will kick it away now for Michigan. Three field goals for the Wolverines, two touchdowns for uh, UCLA. Kevin Williams and Brian Brown. So once again, the Michigan defense is sort of controlling uh, an opponent, but trailing uh, by five. Sounds familiar. Here comes Brian Brown. To about the 25, maybe the 26. ABC's Monday Night Football. It's an AFC Central matchup between the Browns, the Bengals. The 20th anniversary season, beginning at 9 Eastern Time here on ABC Sports. I know there's, there's a winner of that game's got an edge in the Central. Well, if Cincinnati it? loses, they're down two. That's right. Kozar's offense leads the uh, NFL with points scored in 89, and their defense leads in, in takeaways. So, a lot going on in Cleveland. Oh, look at this. Tried to turn back, and Sean Wills is just buried behind the line of scrimmage, back inside the 24. Let's pause right here, five seconds, so our stations can identify themselves. Bobby Abrams. This is WXYZ TV, Channel 7, Detroit. And uh, a moment of relaxation for that hardworking fellow right there because uh, his team is in front. But I still sense a bit of changing of the tide here, shifting of momentum. Ball is back inside the 24, third down and 13, second down and 13, excuse me. Brett Johnson hands the ball away. No room for Brian Brown. Brian Brown. Once again, the Michigan defense, bang, 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 forcing UCLA to the old tango, and they'll punt it away. That was T.J. Osmond making that play, number 94, right there in the middle. Well, Osmond got a part of it, and a nice play by Abrams on the corner, number 24 right there. Abrams has been outstanding all night. Stack them up, that's right. Johnson on third down, four out of six for 46 yards. So third down and 12, and the Michigan defense trying to shut him down. Back goes Brett, pressure on him, jumps up, throws it, throws it short, bounces short of Brian Brown, and the Michigan defense has done its job. Kirk Maggio comes on the field to do the punting. Rip Welburn will go back. Maggio's kicked well. No, he's only kicked once. And he kicked it well. They gave him 56 yards. Rip Welburn needs to receive. Rose Bowl turf. Just outstanding position. And he's making it better. No pressure. Good kick. Welburn at the 31. Got a hole. Got a big hole. Foot race. Inside the 10, down at the 5, 4. Eric Turner, the free safety, ran him down. Well, now there is a big play from the special team. Well, they, they, they messed up last week, but they got it back this week. Michigan special teams giving up two touchdowns last week. Comes back to set up. A scoring opportunity for the Wolverines. Turner at the very end tries to force a fumble. There's a low angle look at it coming right at you. Take a look at some of the blocks here. Well, I told you earlier that Welburn's a former running back. He yeah. can move it. That's a 44 yard front, a 63 yard return. And this is Leroy Horde to the two-yard line, where Eric Turner again makes the tackle for the Bullets. Tough to tackle these backs for Michigan. You know, Keith, I don't know what Bo said to him at halftime, but whatever it was, he should bottle it and sell it. Probably. How would you like to walk home? <laughs> it takes time to blend people into a team effort. the goal line 
but they've stopped him short. Give Marcus Patton some credit for that one. It's a critical down coming up here, Keith. You want to get in, you don't want to make it fourth down. Jim Beckler and Gary Moeller call the plays. I got to believe, though, that Bo is going to go for it on fourth down, and that decision should be made right now because it would influence the call that you make on this down. They go to the wishbone, putting uh, Jefferson into the backfield. That much? You've got Hoard. You figure Hoard gets the ball. And he's in there. Touchdown. Blake. But there's a, there's a laundry <laughs> laying on the ground. Gerbach says it's against UCLA. So does Steve Everett. It's a touchdown. They're staying out there, looking to me like it's uh, going for two. Well, it's 15 to 14. They ought to go for two. It would give them a three-point lead. One point doesn't give them anything. It's a two-point lead and just nope. gives them a field goal. would still uh, allow UCLA to go ahead. <laughs> Still haven't had any definitive signal on on the penalty, and now they're talking to Bo and uh, Gordon Reese is waiting. Uh, well, it would be applicable, would it not, to uh, two point try? Yeah, exactly. You're making half the distance. Offside. Offside. Nope. They penalize on the kickoff. Well, you can do it on either. It's a new rule this year. You can do it on the extra try. That leads me to believe that they're going to go for one point. Just kick it. No, they're not. No. I don't know why they wouldn't have taken it to get halfway uh, closer to the goal line, half the distance. Okay, you go to tip left side. Three wide out. That Mercer. Callaway goes in motion. He goes to the other side. Gerbach to throw it. Gets it away into the end zone. And it is incomplete. As Howard is taken down by Matt Darby. They got tangled up. No foul on the play. And they missed the point. So the last four Michigan possessions of the ball game. And here again is the sense of what you feel. It's been field goal, field goal, field goal. Now touchdown. Watch the two on the bottom screen. He, that's just where he wants to throw it. The blitzers come from both sides. And just an outstanding effort. Outstanding effort. Take a look at the uh, view and the reaction. Donahue with both outside linebackers blitzing. Gets the job done. Gets the pressure on the quarterback. A 15-14 ball game. Michigan. 5-12 to play in the third quarter. The other Pac-10, Big Ten matchup today was a Pac-10 victory for Southern California over Ohio State. Wisconsin lost to California. So the three games involving the two conferences on this day. Michigan will kick off from the 40. John Albertson placing it. It's Williams and Brown back for UCLA. Steps in front of him at the six. And Kevin comes back to the 24. And he is downed by Tim Williams. Nebraska rolling. Goes Florida State at the final. Looks like Bobby is getting his folks organized. And Virginia winner. George Welsh doing a good job after that opening loss to Notre Dame. I don't know if George has ever done a bad job. John Will is the tailback now for UCLA. Has the ball. 
first hit put on him by number 91, Mike Teeter. But he rolls ahead and picks up a couple of yards after the hit, and they'll mark him just short of the 30, and about a five-yard pickup. Reggie Moore has been very quiet. He's the speechless. This is Wills bouncing outside. Welburn, number three, finally took him down, but not until Wills had slid off the top of the factory and picked up the first down. Reggie Moore, if you remember, was the young man who made that big play in Seattle last year, enabling UCLA to beat Washington. center of that line number 71 Rick Myers a three-year starter he and uh, Cornish right next to him the center the anchors of that line Rick from Salinas California Brett Johnson back to throw it gets it off to the sideline and then over there is Reggie Moore and Moore is thrown down about the 45-yard line brought down by Lance Dutton a sophomore from Cambridge Massachusetts a look at the center of the line see the offensive line blocking Meyer 71 on teeter 91 he's a biology major Rick Meyer biology major wants to looking to go into pre-med wants to be an orthopedic surgeon he's 6 5 and 275 when he says cut we cut <laughs> second down pass on first down picked up nine and second down and one now this is the room with the tailback Sean Wills Bobby Abrams gets another tackle for Michigan. Fires an academic all pack 10 as the Bruins start to move. Well, the Bruins need to reestablish themselves here in this possession, I think. The momentum has been all Michigan in the second half. Johnson back and has a man underneath. The pass is caught short by Scott Miller. He turned back inside, and uh, as he turned to meet the ball, it was a little behind him, and Scott fell down. So they place it precisely on the Michigan 48 yard line. They've got to go to the 43 to get the first down. Miller didn't come right to UCLA with Johnson, his high school uh, teammate. He went to junior college for a couple of years. Joined up with him this year. And became a junior college all American. John Will. He runs into some serious traffic just short of the 45-yard line. Tomorrow night, the premiere of this season's most talked about show, Life Goes On. It's a new one. Everybody, I watched it last week, and I thought it was terrific. It really was a good program. It moved to its regular time at 7, 6 Central on ABC. So start your Sunday night with Life Goes On tomorrow here on ABC. You'll enjoy it. My personal recommendation. I really enjoy it. Check it out. It's good one. Well done. Wills got it again. Going for the first down on third down and three, and he didn't get it. I mean to tell you, J.J. Grant stepped in there with some authority. So did Eric Anderson. Well, we've been wondering about J.J. Grant. He's been in and out. He's had some knee surgery on those knees the last couple of years. Slides to the outside. Does what a linebacker is supposed to do. Fill the hole. Fill the gap. Get some help from Anderson and one of the defensive backs. So it is fourth and one, and the Bruins are going for it. Here's some good old-fashioned down-home Jovon football right here. Me and you, partner. Let's go. <laughs> Johnson will throw it. That might be a big one. You got the call. Play action left side of your screen, bottom left. Austin coming in, the number three tight end. Makes an outstanding catch on a big play. This was a possession saving first down. 
will drop right at the 25, the line of scrimmage by Brent White, the big senior from Dayton, Ohio. Give you an idea, though, Michigan is making them do uh, what they had in mind. UCLA's longest rush of this ball game, Bob, seven yards. Yes. So they're giving them all kinds of opportunities to make mistakes, but Doc is bailing them out yeah. with the herb. That was a terrific catch by Walker. <laughs> Gonna throw it. Can't do it. Doesn't have time. Trip Welburn. Strong safety. And there was outside pressure as well that turned him back in. Well, Michigan is not sitting back. Welburn, the strong safety, is here. As the receivers go out and the receiver and the quarterback comes back, Welburn is going to come in and make the sack. Pressure the quarterback. You can't do it in the coverage. Welburn fights off the block and gets the sack. The loss is about three. Third and 13. Johnson throwing it. Knocked down to the line of scrimmage. He had Farr and Richardson both in that neighborhood, but T.J. Osmond got his hand up, slapped it down. Number 94. And so in comes Velasco. It'll be his first field goal try of the night. He tried one, and Tennessee blocked it in the opening game. He's been good on 32 out of 33 inside the 44-yard line. This is a 45-yarder, and he says he's perfectly happy without the tee. That's pretty good. So UCLA goes back to the lead. 5-2. A Shem Beckler coached Michigan team has lost their opener. They went on to win a bowl game each of those years. Oh, three and two against uh, UCLA. The last time they played was in an 83 uh, Rose Bowl game. An 82 team from UCLA was all for good team. All right, Bruins, 17-15, and here's your kickoff by Del Uiso. On the chalk, that'll cost him five, and he'll kick it again. Notre Dame-Purdue opens the action next Saturday, and then following that ball game from West Lafayette, that'll be at 11 o'clock local time, 12 Eastern time. And then comes your choice, if, depending on what part of the country you're in. You don't really have a choice, I guess. Miami at Michigan State for the Midwest, East, and South. Out here in the West, you'll see Southern California at Washington State. And it's Miami at Michigan State. And I think that's very important because Michigan State at home is tough, and so is Washington State. And what about Purdue? Purdue's tough. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. when you... Uh, Got the name spoiler makers When you talk three. about those two teams, you can throw out the record. That's right. In several years, where Howard the underdog has uh, pulled some upset. Ten times. Okay. Of course, that's probably a Purdue promotion, right? Ten times. Well, I think Purdue was underdog most <laughs> of the time, too. <laughs> yeah, they've had some more. Here comes Tony Bowles. Back to the 26, 27 yard line. End of the third quarter. And after three in the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. It's 17-15, UCLA. Hi, today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why nobody's winning, like the heartbeat of America. And by the United States Postal Service, we deliver for you. Seventeen fifteen at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, Michigan and UCLA. Michigan having three field goals, finally getting a touchdown in the third quarter to take the lead. UCLA leading 14 to 6 at halftime, adding a 45-yarder to regain the lead, and that's where we are. 
Another score that just uh, game just finished. Pittsburgh beat Syracuse 30 to 23. So now Michigan owns the ball at their own 27. First down as we go to the fourth quarter. Lloyd Carr, Carr box the quarterback. Excuse me, Lloyd Carr just talking to his defensive troops from Michigan. And on first down to throw it down the middle. No. Intended for Derek Walker. Double coverage on him. Last spring, this is what the Michigan depth chart at quarterback looked like. Taylor, Brown, Odom, Solomon, Gerbach. The top two are fifth-year senior quarterbacks. Michigan was very deep in the quarterbacks. Demetrius Brown was academically ineligible. Michael Taylor was injured last week. Bo says he might be out four to six weeks. Odom got on the uh, got in Bo's doghouse by getting some papers late in the summer school. And Gerbach has passed up Solom. Man comes from fifth in spring trying to lead this club to a win. Second down and ten. And a little delay inside with Tony Bowles, and he'll get it up to about the 30, and that'll do it there. And let's join Roger Twyble in New York. Thank you, Keith. Pitt had lost five in a row to Syracuse, but redshirt freshman quarterback Alex Van Pelt just typifies the day and his season so far. And a third and four with just over three minutes left, 22 yards to Reggie Williams to keep the ball going on the season. 51 of 67, 663 yards, four touchdowns. He has completed 76% of his passes this year as Pitt beats Syracuse. Back to you, Keith. And here it's third down and seven. Michigan, four out of ten on third down conversion. Blitz, they pick it up. Ball loose to recover it. UCLA ball. Marcus Patton knocked it loose. Mike Lotus covered it. Sean Wills behind him, and Wills has the ball, and he is brought down by Trip Melbourne on a blitz. Melbourne got him back at the 26-yard line. Top field, the defensive coordinator says of Patton, he was a walk-on. His father was uh, killed when he was very young. He was a former L.A. cop, killed in the line of duty. Does he really like this kid. He's a hard worker, great work habits, very smart. That he wants to be a lawyer when he gets out of school. And incidentally, for those of you in Illinois, Libertyville area, looking for Brian Wilcox, slight concussion first half. He is not in the game. But he's all right. Johnson back. Gets his pass off. Caught. Corwin Anthony, a penalty flag. Anthony gets his first catch of the night. UCLA. Take a look at the third quarter stats. Turnovers one apiece, and the turnovers really have changed the ball game. Defense creates momentum, and uh, other than that, the statistics are pretty much the same. But the turnovers have turned this ball game around. That's a big ten yards right there. a lot of statistics this has really been a lot of a lot of defense and that's the way you would expect it from a Schembechler team well they had it down at the 21 blitz by Wilburn loss of five now ten more on the penalty and Johnson pitches to Sean Wills and Wills on a sweep to the sideline and Michigan uses the boundary well enough as Abrams and White runs and run him out and you've got 13 minutes to play in the ball game Wills 
remains the lone back for the Bruins with Richardson and Farr. Wide outs and Arbuckle go to the eighth back We're in the flank position on third down and 20. Brett Johnson back to throw it. Getting some heat. And they got it. All the way back at the 45 yard line. Eric Anderson. Whoa, that was a fierce defensive series for Richard. Anderson, an outstanding linebacker. Didn't play a lot last year because he was a freshman, but he's in there playing well. Last week he played very well, and again this week. All right, Maggio is in the punt, 56 and 44 on the night. And it's Welburn back at the 10 yard line for Michigan. Punt is away, hits it high, lazy fly ball. Eric gets called at the 14 yard line. Time remaining, 11.40. That's from the Blimp Columbia. Goodyear Blimp out of Carson. Great out of Lacondo Beach. The Goodyear Blimps have been flying over sporting events and special events, civic events since 1925, and they just christened a new one last week. Spirit of Akron. State of the art. Gerba gives the ball to Pony Bowl. Bowl gets around the corner and gets out close to the 30 yard line. Mark at the 29. Ooh. Matt Darby finally brought him down, but uh, Bowles showed you some experience there. He was patient. He waited. He likes to run outside. He has more speed than the other running backs for Michigan. Last year, he had seven 100-plus games rushing for Michigan. It's a two-point ball game. 17-15, UCLA. First down, Michigan, 29. Bowles again to the 35. Stacy Argo, sophomore out of Princeton, California, the tackle for the Bruins. It's a gain of six. It'll be second down four. Well, I'll tell you something. You let that Michigan running game get in uh, rhythm like it looks like it's going, it's getting. Well, ideally, sure. ideally, they'd like to have it here, not only to gain the yardage, but also to take some time off the clock. Forward to the tailback spot, leg it in, replacing uh, Bowles to give Tony a, a little rest. And Leroy has it. And somebody grabbed his hind leg as he started to cut back across the middle. And they get him short of the first down. That right there, Stanford, Oregon, might be one of the big upsets of the day. Washington State, over to Laramie, had to score late to get that win. It is not easy to win in Laramie, Wyoming. Third down and one. Holds his back. Ford has it. Fumbled it. UCLA ball. So Michigan turns it over. Bruins will go to work from the 41 yard line. Take a look. There the ball gets knocked out. Looks like Argo 41 gets it. Michigan led the nation last year in fewest giveaways with 11. Two interceptions and nine fumbles. They had three turnovers here already this evening. That one right there could cost them this, any chance for this ballgame. So the Bruins get it at the Michigan 41-yard line. And young Brett Johnson rides it off to this fullback, Eswick. And uh, Eric Anderson is not having any of it. As he takes on the big blue and pullback and rolls him back. But his forward progress is worth two yards.
Watson sprints out, throws to the sideline. They call it good, and it's just short of the 30. Scott Miller. Quarterback mobility. It causes all kinds of problems defensively, trying to contain him. Don't let him get outside the pocket. You can buy more time. It puts more pressure on your defensive backs. It's Brett Johnson, I'm impressed with him. Yep, he's got a big knife. He's a scrappy kind of a guy, isn't he? He's gutsy. Hey, yo, there's well, certainly no secret in that kind of uh, a play. The ball is rolling around, and UCLA covers it. And it looked like Jacobson, number 77, the big senior tackle from Mission Viejo, covered it, and the Bruins keep possession. But there is certainly a little deception when you run your one-back set like that with Brown or Wills or whoever it might be carrying. You're just simply saying to your offensive front, make a hole. Well, exactly right. And you got two tight ends in there. What that does is it stops the defensive linebackers on the outside from getting into your backfield and making a big play and causing a fumble. Wills is back in for the Bruins. Uh, he bumped into some hard-headed folks right about there. P.J. Osman, uh, number 94, is at the bottom. John Milligan's on top. Time, 8-10 to play in the ball game. You know, I know it gets people puffing and puffing. We've got these high-powered promotion campaigns for trophies, but, Bob, if they had the high school vote tomorrow, I'd vote for D. Dower. Oh, I think I would, too. <laughs> I mean, he's the guy that's really earned it yep. on the field. This is well. Osmond and Marshall diving for the marker, and it looks like he's got a first down. He does. First down, Michigan 20 yard line. Seven and a half minutes to play in the game. Johnson to Will. Got a corner. Well, there's your big play. He's got a first down. Is that double tight end alignment? And they got a solid block on the corner. And he went around it. Well, you're right. Two tight ends means these linebackers don't get in the backfield. Watch Jacob in 77 as he's going to lead Wills around the corner. 77 really is slowing him down. He says, I'm taking, I don't need you anymore. I'm past the line of scrimmage. Let me use my speed. First and goal from the seven. Well, Wills again. And John to the five. 180 pounds got four from him. He's the first true freshman to play for Terry Donahue in several years. He usually red shirts all of them. That's T.J. Osmond coming off the field for Michigan, the nose guard. Second down and goal from the five. He had that big night against Nebraska, that one big run, and he was on his way in his freshman year with Sean Will. Here he goes again. I tell you one thing, he has no respect for his body because <laughs> he threw it in there and David Key tried to dismember him. But he holds the ball and comes up growling because he didn't score. Very nice young man, very charismatic, was the uh, class president his junior and senior year in high school. Came out of a tough area in uh, Los Angeles and uh, really is a good kid. Third down and goal from the two. Foreman Anthony, the tight end in motion, one of the H-backs. Johnson throws it, touchdown, Anthony! They 
They got three good tight ends on this UCLA team. Paul and Anthony moved into what they have now come to call an H-back position, went in motion, and just slid on into the corner and made the catch. You saw Austin, number 95, make a big catch at the tight end position on a fourth and one earlier in the ballgame. Velasco for the point. Blocked. That one was blocked. Looked like the hole might have been all right, but whatever, if there was a problem, it came off low and uh, Michigan blocked it. And that's a critical block because it puts eight points between them. A touchdown and a two-point conversion will do it. Here's Anthony right here. He'd been in motion. He came back. He's going to swing to the outside. The man he beats is Dotton, number 22. Going to have play action in the backfield. To the left of your screen, if Dotton could have cut in front of him, just inches away. See the reaction of the coaching staff. Of course, Donahue on the right knows what the play is. Bo has to see what this defense does, and he doesn't like it. I would suggest to you that that turnover and that subsequent scoring drive may have made UCLA a tough team this season. And they only had to go 41 yards because of the fumble. Tony Bowles comes back. They stop him at the 17, short of the 20. So the Wolverines are beleaguered now. 23-15, Mike Adamley with Mark Messner. Yeah, Keith, remember this guy, 25 pounds lighter. Former All-American, now Los Angeles Ram. I'm surprised Bo didn't convince you to suit up. Well, I think uh, there would have been an opportune thing for me to do. I would have sure loved to have done it, because it's really tearing me up seeing these guys play. It's the first Michigan game really I've ever seen in person without playing. Still bleed maize and blue. You went wild when they blocked that extra point attempt. Well, that's a big play. I mean, that means... Uh, uh, touchdown and a, a two-point conversion to tie the ball game up, and I've got all the confidence in the world in these Wolverines. This is a heck of a football team, and uh, I'm going to sure miss not playing with them, that's for sure. Mark, you look great. Uh, good luck this season with the Rams. Get off that developmental squad. Okay, Mark Messner. And first down from the 17, Gerbach to throw it. Goes underneath with it. And it is incomplete, intended for Greg McMurtry. It was not a particularly well-thrown ball. and take a look at that missed extra point that would have put him up by nine. The hold was good. Ooh, kick was a little low. He had some uh, Wolverines that were really yeah, they were over there. the top. Velasco was 99 out of 100 coming up for that kick. Second down and 10. A forward in motion. Bowles catches underneath, brought down at the 24. Pickup is about seven. It'll be third down and something like three. Gerbach on the night is now six of 14 for around 60 yards. Certainly not the numbers that he hung up last week in release of Michael Taylor and Keith. He brought him back last week, but he's not the same quarterback this week as he was last week. Just not getting it done. I'll tell you what, those corners for UCLA have played well, too. They have not tested the corner. Drive Beverly once. That was about it. Time call by Michigan at 4.47 to play. is to the tight end underneath and the play is broken up by Matt Derby. It was intended for Derek Walker, the tight end. And if the ball is late. It was a little bit behind him, too. Uh, Darby did a nice job of jamming the tight end, took him off his route a little bit, and uh, forced the throw to be a little bit behind him. UCLA's defense coming in average 400 yards in the first two games, giving up 400. Tonight, they've only given up 164 to Michigan. That's the story of the game right there. 
Chris Stapleton, second punt. His first one was 49 yards. $815,000 to build it. It was built as a student center. It is still part of the student center. So they have added the Ackerman Union. Peaches is hot. Look at that. It's 80 degrees. John wiping his brow. Don Langford, our cameraman, up with the captain tonight in the Goodyear blimp. I don't want to hear any noise from you. That's good duty. Here comes UCLA with a football. Sean Rules, who's had a busy night, moves it out to the 40-yard line. And it's now gut check time for the Michigan defense. If they're to have any chance to win this ball game, they have got to set UCLA down and take the ball away from them. Defense has not played that poorly. They've been on the field on some short field. Turnovers has given the UCLA Bruins good field position, and they've taken advantage of it here tonight. to build an eight-point lead, and now the Bruins have returned the favor. J.J. Grant covered it. Good hit here. Now watch Keene. I'm coming from the right side. David Key, 26, shakes it loose with a good crushing tackle. The Wolverines get the big break that they need. Now it's time for the offense to do something. UCLA 43-yard line. First down, Michigan. It's been a grinder. It has been. been. A lot of turnovers, a lot of key points in this ball game. That's Tony Bowles in motion. We're back to throw it. Bruins try to get to him. Gets his pass away to walk at the tight end. And he's down at the UCLA 32. That's the play from this side. They ran the last time from the other side. Trying to pick up their first down, and it didn't work. The coverage was different. This time it was a zone. Nobody yep. was riding him. Right. The last time it was a man coverage with Darby really jamming him. I would think UCLA could play him head up, wouldn't you? You would try. For the secondary, they could. Yeah. Well, ball is away, and the pass is completed. But it's one of those things that uh, turns over your stomach a couple of times before it gets to your receiver because he threw it a long way and it was a blue shirt looking at it. Chris Callaway caught it. Michigan has two timeouts remaining. Time is not a problem. Over three minutes, about three minutes to go. Second down and two. That's Leroy Horde into the middle and close to the first down. Frank Davis who is a good inside linebacker for UCLA. Popped him. They don't want to measure. They say it's third down. Third and a half a yard. Over the top, Leroy Horde, first down at the 20 of UCLA. At two minutes, 23 seconds. Clock stopping while the chains are moved. Now, if you're Michigan, what you've got to be doing on the sideline is sending somebody to get your best two-point play. If so, if you do score, you can at least tie the ball game up. You want to have your best play call. You don't want to be surprised if and when you do score. Bowles, 10, 8, first down. First and goal, Michigan. Oh, 
a good throw and a good call. UCLA's defense was dropping off, protecting the inside. Back out of the backfield on a little slant to the sideline, picked up the first down. Make it the seventh. First and goal from the seventh. This is the area, Keith, where it's tough to throw because the defense only has 10 yards of the end zone and about seven yards of the field to cover. They're going to run it right here. Go to their wishbone, leg it in the game. Leroy Horde to the 5 4 3. Second down and goal. Two minutes to play in the game. Well, you still need to score as quickly as you can because if you don't make the two points, then you need to get the ball back and try a field goal. But you're not sure you're going to get that in. All the time. That's UCLA. Time out. We'll be back for the finish between the Bruins and the Wolverines after a word from our ABC station. Bears game Sunday night at 11:30 on seven. Michigan owns the ball. They're down at the UCLA three. It is second down and goal for the Wolverines. They need a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie. Earlier today, there were two other games matching the Big Ten Pac-10. USC beat Ohio State 42-3, and Wisconsin lost to California 20-14. Second and goal. Gerbach has the ball. Sets, pressure, throws away. Beyond the playing field, he had his tight end, Derek Walker, in the corner. He was open. But the pressure was coming from Kelly and Lodish, and he threw it away. Good read by Turner, 29, covering. He saw something in the backfield. That's a smart play by Gerbach. Just throw it away. I like the call. Third and goal. 139 to play. This is where if you have a mobile quarterback, Keith, you can get him outside and buy more time. Gerbach is not... Your mobile quarterback. Bowles late getting there on third and goal from the three. Gerbach will throw it, throws it hard into the end zone. It is touchdown, Walker. So they go back to the tight end. My guys at 135 to play in the game. Well, Keith loves the tight ends, and here he is right here. He's just going to release to the inside. And nobody's going to be in the middle of the field of covering. Linebacker split. One blitzes. The other goes after the back. Darby, I believe it is, covers the tight end, but is not there in time. This is a big play that they should have had diagrammed and ready to go about three or four minutes ago. 23-21. They're going for two to tie. At 1.35 to play. Ford, the lone back. Howard in motion. Pressure coming. Pass away. Into the end zone. Slapped around. Incomplete. No good. And UCLA leads by two. motion man comes out he had the man that he wanted Walker the tight end slides to the inside he's wide open Does the ball just deflected at the line yeah, of scrimmage? one of the linebackers jumped up and hit it there's Walker 89 watch him as he releases Davis 54 misses the jam ball was deflected is the linebacker or one of the linemen somebody up near the line of scrimmage hit it there it is right there, number 65, Kelly. Brian Kelly, the nose tackle. So, Brian Kelly with the big play. 
give ground clearance. Twyville in New York, Nebraska pounded Minnesota 48 to nothing the final, and in their last three games, look at the point total, 170 to 20. Next week, Nebraska takes on Oregon State. Also out of the Pac-10 tonight, it's Arizona leading Washington 7-3 in Tucson, Arizona State and Houston in Tempe, tied up at 7. Let's go back to Keith Jackson. All right. What do you do? You kick it deep, you got two timeouts. Brian Kelly is the man of the moment for UCLA. Last week, Michigan was in a similar situation, but had four minutes instead of a minute and a half. Kicked it short, didn't kick it very well. Not only kicked it four yards. So the Bruin defense standing on the sideline waiting. There's the onside kick. That's a good one. Michigan's got it. At the 40, the ball ricocheted high in the air, and Beta Murray came down with it at the UCLA 39-yard line. Oh, my goodness. Now that Bruin defensive bunch have got to come back on the field. You couldn't ask for a better onside kick. As good as this is, the one last week was just as bad. Hopped over everybody, and your man is right there to recover. Well, they're going to bring it back. They don't give them the ball that deep. They brought it back to where you recover. Well, I think they brought it back to where it hit somebody. He had that ball down at the 40 when yeah. he got it. We're giving it on the 46. Well, you can't draw it up any better than that. Nope. Must have hit somebody back up at the 46 yard line. Well, Michigan's got its chance. 133 to play. The Bruins come after Gerbach. Throws it. And it's complete to Chris Callaway, right at the marker. And Chris is going to get up and walk away from it. Ooh. This is an area where a young quarterback who is not as experienced in running these two-minute offenses, the things he needs to know is, is, number one, I don't want to throw an interception. If I throw an interception, I don't get another play, and I don't get a chance to win the game. Number two, you don't want to take a sack. A sack takes you further back out of the, out of the field position, You've got two timeouts and a minute and 25 seconds to play. He's in good shape with, with the time. On second down and one. Here comes the blitz. They pick it up. Pass caught by Bode. They got the first down as Bode goes to the UCLA 27-yard line. Craig Davis wrote him out. Clock stops as they move the team. Well, they're blitzing, and when you blitz, everybody is man-to-man. -man. Here's Bowles. He's going to come down and run a little out pattern out of the backfield. It's a good route by Bowles. Good protection in the backfield. And another play, and they haven't used their timeout because both plays have been out of bounds. And the clock shows 120. What a seesaw, emotional grinder this it's ball game has been. Keith, what do you do? Do you blitz or do you lay back? I'd go after. But they hand it off inside. And Tony Bowles carries. And doesn't get much. And they win it. Well, there's a point in time where Bob Field, the defensive coordinator, has got to make a decision. 110 to play in the game. Michigan's ball, UCLA 25. J.D. Carlson, that's what he has done tonight, the place kicker. And just moments ago, he was talking on the telephone. I don't know <laughs> if it was mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, or a coach. But somebody <laughs> had called him and said, hey. Well, he's 42 yards field goal right now. If Michigan doesn't do anything else offensively, he can make a 42-yarder. So the key for Gerbach is don't turn it over and don't take a sack. Incompletions are all right. Second down and eight. Little drop off on the screen to Tony Bowles. He's got some daylight. Go to the sidelines. He doesn't go to the sidelines. Now he does, and the Bruins are wrestling out inside the 10 yard line. Whoa, was that a biggie? That's an excellent call, but it was a, in, in some ways, it was a lucky call because UCLA was in a zone defense. And when you're in zone, you drop back. If this had been a man coverage, the screening back would have had a linebacker right in his pocket. 68 is Kokozo. Bowles makes 
the catch. If it had been man coverage, it would have been man, right man up there in his face. The ball is at the UCLA 9, having stopped the clock at 58 seconds, and it's first down and goal, Michigan. Leroy Horde into the stack for a yard. Brad Bryson, Mike Lodish, a whole bunch of blue-shirted folks over there. Lodish on that tackle. Time called now by Michigan. Each team with one timeout remaining. Michigan State Spartans for regional coverage of USC at Washington State next week on ABC's College Football. Place kicker J.D. Carlson fouling. I think 46 seconds. UCLA leading by two points. Michigan's ball second down and goal from the eight. Keith, I think you keep the ball on the ground. The strength of this team is in the running backs. I'd run it back into the middle. You've got enough yardage. You don't want to be too conservative. You've got plays that are that are better than others. The other thing you've got to think of offensively is what plays are good against blitzes. Because UCLA certainly needs to cause something to happen. They don't need to lay back at this time. Crowd gets into it. Ball goes to Bowles. He's got a little room. Goes to the five, down to the three. Now they've got it just about the right place for Carlson. Eric Turner made that tackle. Otherwise, Bowles UCLA. scores. UCLA spends its last timeout. And that stops your clock at 35 seconds. Third and go. Michigan has one more run at it, and then the try. When the Bass Angler Sportsman Society went fishing for an official truck, they reeled in a Chevy Astro. Rumor has it they were hooked on our superior towing power. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Just off Route 19 in St. Petersburg is a place where you can learn to ski the Alps and shoot the rapids all in the same building. At Bill Jackson Sporting Goods, you can practice everything from a stem Christie to an Eskimo roll. But if you go there, remember, bring your imagination and your visa card. Because Bill Jackson doesn't promise you Sun Moritz, and he doesn't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Here's another Chevy that really hauls on the track. The Chevy truck, the official truck of NASCAR. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Runs the ball one more time. Then they can spend their last time out and have the field goal try if they don't score. Dave Burnson, our stats tonight, as usual, and Todd Berry, our spotter. Thank you, gentlemen. They have now prepared the play. Both sides, both teams went to the sideline. Keith, I think you really try to score here. You just don't uh, well, sure. run a safe play. Sure. But that field goal is sitting on the ground now. It's certainly a no sure thing. No sure. Got to run it to the right. That's where the daylight is. Option. They're back. Uh oh. He moved it over in the center just to get it centered in the middle of the goal post. Well, they didn't try to score, did they? Nope. Well, they are trusting their place kicker. The clock is running. They're going to take it on down and have just enough time to snap. Five, four, and they stop it at three. Well, the whole thing comes down to J.D. Carlson, to Ken Solomon, who must handle the snap from Steve Everett. Everett is a redshirt freshman from Miami, the center. Solomon is a sophomore. He's from Canyon Country up the road here north of uh, Los Angeles and Pasadena. J.D. Carlson is a sophomore from Tallahassee, Florida. What you basically have here is 71,797 people, several million watching on television, 
all gathered together, the coaching staffs and all of this, to watch three teenagers handle the most important moment of the ball game. Well put. And what you have is the special teams for Michigan with an opportunity to win one, whereas last week with Rocket Ismail running two touchdowns back, they really lost it. 24 yards. J.D. Carlson, 46, 36, 43, 24. He'll be an MVP. He just grew a foot. <laughs> he was smiling before the ball went through. He enjoys it so much. Well, it's been a heck of an effort by two very good football teams. I don't know what it proves. Maybe nothing, except it's an exciting game played by the collegiate kid. Penalty. All sorts of things could happen here. There's one tick remaining on the clock. You're... Chevy players in the ball game, obviously J.D. Carlson with four field goals, and depending on what happens in this final second, the winner. Brett Johnson, 13 out of 20 for 140 yards, two touchdowns on tonight's game. And an accomplished effort by the redshirt freshman, certainly. And he was impressive. Brett Johnson, uh, the tough loss for Terry Donahue. He has beaten the uh, Big Ten teams five straight that appears to be in jeopardy tonight, but the tough loss for he and the U UCLA Bruins. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and uh, to help those who need some financial help. You got a squib kick this. Keith. Well, they, they were penalized because uh, the Michigan kids were out on the field and they do squib kick it. They just roll it down there and it is... No, it's all right. Clock doesn't, uh, doesn't start. Doesn't yeah. start. They still got uh, Mark Estwick covered the ball, so you still got that one second. See, he accepted the ball in a down position, so it's considered a fair catch, and he may have even called fair catch. In fact, uh, I don't normally look that far upfield. No, he didn't. He didn't. He just caught it and covered it. He just caught it and covered it. But you can fair catch a kick, a kickoff just as easy as you can a punt. And what this does now, it gives UCLA the football at their own 42. And uh, playing center field for Michigan, standing all the way back at the 10-yard line, is Tripp and Wellborn. Ada Murray is also going back to with it. Johnson loads it up and lets it go. That's no, it's not Johnson. It's Jim Bond. Bond, uh, the strong arm sophomore from Valencia, was in for the final play, and he threw it as far as he could throw it, all the way down to the five-yard line, and it was incomplete. And it was a heck of a football game as the Michigan Wolverines win it by a score of 24 to 23. The University of Michigan student-athletes exemplify the talent and preparation that identify Michigan alumni as leaders. Michigan's extensive research base and exceptional faculty prepare students from Michigan and from around the world to meet challenges they'll face in the 21st century. In the classroom or on the playing field, Michigan students are committed to achieving the high level of success that comes from all-out effort. That's a Michigan tradition. Well, I think, Bob Greasy, a lot of young folks grew a little bit tonight because they got into a ball game and they tested each other to the limit, and it was fun to watch. 
the type of game you hate to see either side lose, the players or the coaches. That's right. There's your final. Michigan 24, UCLA 23. We hope you enjoy it. This week on ABC's Monday Night Football, Boomer Esiason and the Cincinnati Bengals host the Cleveland Browns in a fight that could set the tone for the race in the AFC Central. Next Saturday, ABC's College Football offers a doubleheader. First live at noon Eastern, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and the Purdue Boilermakers. Then regional action follows when some of you will see the Miami Hurricanes at Michigan State. Others will see Southern California at Washington State. That's all next Saturday on ABC's College Football. Aerial camera facilities provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. ABC's